underground bunker. This is your proprietor with some very sad news. If you were at our Substack today at tonyortega.substack.com, you saw we had news about Scientology in a recent poll. YouGov, which is a, a reputable British marketing polling company, has a, a, a American branch, YouGov USA, and they did a poll of a thousand Americans and asking them about religious organizations in this country on a scale of favorability. So either they were very favorable towards them or not favorable towards them. And of course, these were just impressions. They weren't necessarily organizations that these people knew about. And there are other caveats we have to keep in mind that were de definitely pointed out by some readers today. But the point is, while the usual sort of Protestant, Catholic, Jewish groups were near the top of the poll, as far as Americans feeling favorable towards them, down near the bottom, unsurprisingly, you had groups like Christian Science and Islam, Mormonism, and Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, people tend not to have very high regard for those groups. In America anyway and we can debate about whether that's fair or not and again how this poll was conducted but the really sad thing for Scientologists is that at the very bottom of the poll the two groups that tied for the most reviled religions in the United States of America were the Church of Scientology and Satanism. Now again, we, we have to look at the parameters and the fact that these people are judging favorability on groups they aren't necessarily very, very familiar with, and some of them clearly maybe didn't do so well because people were confusing one group for another. But even with all those caveats, what do we see? That Scientology is so hated in America, it tied for the absolute bottom with Satanism. Look at it another way. The religious organization with tax-exempt status in this country that has people like Tom Cruise and John Travolta fronting it tied with the organization whose only recognizable figure is Satan himself. This is a red letter day in the history of Scientology watching people. I mean, you know, we knew that Scientology had a bad reputation, but my goodness. It's tied with the devil worshippers for last place. Um, I think Leah Remini deserves uh, to take a bow and Mike Rinder, Alex Gibney, Lawrence Wright, Janet Reitman, Russell Miller, John Atack, Tori Chrisman, Karen De La Carriere, Jeffrey Augustine, Dave Turetsky, Andreas Haldol Lund, all of the people who for decades have been trying to tell the public that Scientology is not just some odd group. It's a harmful organization that destroys people, rips apart families, forces young women to have abortions, hires professionals to destroy people's lives. So you begin to see why it is considered by the public to be about the same regard as they have for Satan's followers. I gotta tell you, 
Even I'm a little surprised. I mean, this is something. But look, you know, you could go all the way back to the beginning. Some people are going to tell you that there's a lot of connection between Scientology and Satanism. And I think some, that's a little bit controversial because it's true that L. Ron Hubbard, when he came out of World War II, you know, got hooked up with John Parsons in Pasadena and they were definitely into the occult. But Parsons was into Thelema, Thelema, however you say it. And they were, you know, really um, following the leadership of Aleister Crowley in England, who was known as the Beast, right? I mean, you know, he, he, no question that he was into some dark stuff. But I know that the people in Thelema really will tell you that's not Satanism, they're not the same thing. But come on, L. Ron Hubbard was into the occult. And when he started Scientology, he drew a lot of it from Crowley. You can see a number of different parallels uh, about, you know, between what Crowley was doing in England and what Hubbard was doing in Los Angeles when he was creating this stuff. And another thing I'd like to point out, in 1949, the, as he was getting Dianetics ready for publication, okay? This is something he'd been working on for a little while now, and he, was, he knew it was gonna, he had a chance to make a big splash. He wrote a letter to his literary agent and good friend, Forrest Ackerman. For he's a legendary figure in science fiction fandom, but he was also L. Ron Hubbard's agent, and Hubbard wanted him to know what was in Dianetics and what was taking so long. And this is how L. Ron Hubbard described Dianetics to Forrest Ackerman in 1949. I shall ship it along just as soon as decent. Then you can rape women without their knowing it, communicate suicide messages to your enemies as they sleep, sell the Arroyo Seco Parkway to the mayor for cash, evolve the best way of protecting or destroying communism, and other handy household hints. If you go crazy, remember you were warned. And a little later in that same letter, he says... I have not decided whether to destroy the Catholic Church or merely start a new one. There it is, in a letter in 1949 from L. Ron Hubbard to Forrest Ackerman. And what, what happened uh, 73 years later in a courthouse in Los Angeles? A Scientologist was accused of raping three women who were Scientologists themselves and part of the contention was that the Church of Scientology tried to convince those women they had not been raped, and it took them considerable time to figure it out. Again, what did Hubbard tell Ackerman his book was going to be about? Raping women without their knowing it. I don't know. I think that's a pretty spooky echo to what's been going on lately in an L.A. courthouse. And you begin to see as this stuff has been reported on by reporters who are at the courthouse, why the public takes such a dim view of Scientology. And then how does Scientology react to those reports? I mean, one of the things that was incredible to me in Los Angeles was to see these very good reporters like Noah Goldberg at the LA Times, Gene Mattis, <coughs> Gene Mattis at Variety, Dominic Patton at Deadline, just reporting from the courthouse what, what was being said, doing a little digging, doing some interviews, and they just get smeared on social media by Scientology, especially if they quoted me. Boy, that's, that's, that, that really gets Scientology amped up. But did Scientology not think this stuff adds up when you're just smearing reporters? And every day you're lying, like... You know, in the courthouse, in the, you know, we were watching witness after witness testifying that in Scientology, you're not supposed to turn in a fellow Scientologist to the police. They want to handle everything in-house. Also, they blame the victim and tell rape victims they're not rape victims. This was testified to day after day. 
And every day, these reporters would go to the church for a comment, and spokeswoman Corinne Powell would say, we don't have that rule. That's just not true. And you can look it up in their book. It's in black and white. The lying, the smearing, the abuses. Guess what, Scientology? The public gets it. Your lies don't work. You are now considered on the level of devil worshipers. And I've heard from a number of people today who say that Satanism is getting a bad rap. Hey, that may be the case. Uh, you know, the Satanists have done some pretty creative things recently in politics. And uh, I'm certainly not going to criticize uh, today's Satanists and the, the kind of things that they're doing. But it just goes to show you that all the things Scientology has done, the public doesn't ignore it. They know what's going on. Like I said, it's a red letter day in the history of Scientology watching. And I'm glad you were all along with me. If you still don't know what I'm talking about, please go to tonyortega.substack.com. You'll see all of our fresh reporting. We've got great stuff coming. And uh, we got a New Year's to celebrate pretty soon. So, from somewhere in New York, it's your proprietor signing off.